let's quickly read this as i end this is the last article before i end so this article is courtesy of the telegraph regarding Berghain. another article about Berghain. Berghain sometimes goes through these phases in it where they get loads of press all at one time and then no one talks about the club again so i wonder what's going on did something happen have like loads of people you know fucking realize where it is like what's happened it's just part of the news cycle i wonder what's happened that's kind of spurned all these articles and videos and stuff popping up all over the place but anyway regardless the telegraph have an article titled how i got into the world's most exclusive nightclub courtesy of the guardian written by a writer called alex barton so let's check this out and see what alex barton said about his or their experience at Berghain. this is a fucking brilliant picture this this basically situates me straight away if you haven't been Berghain, this is the front this is where you queue up and it's funny because these guardrails here is the moment where you're starting to, your heart starts to beat really quickly. You start to get goosebumps. Your throat starts to dry up, probably because you sucked some cocks before you went there. Why not? But before you hit this barrier, you're probably talking to a lot of people. I know I am. I'm a chatty motherfucker. So I'm chatting around to people. I'm asking them how long they've been here, who they're here to see, if they've got a number for somebody for some drugs. I'm doing whatever I'm doing in a queue. But the moment you hit this barrier, it's like an unspoken rule. Everybody gets quiet. So it's really noisy before you get to this barrier because it's a long queue. But the moment you hit the, the snake barrier thing that looks like a f where you'd be in a theme park, suddenly it gets quiet. And everyone just starts like looking and judging because usually here's a door, right? That's the door you go in. And obviously you snake and you're here on the wall about to go and the security guards or the the, the bouncers the door pickers I, I, they're usually called i think they're called door pickers but i don't know how you can record them but let's just say bouncers they're the ones that select people to go in and they usually look at you give you a little two second look up and down and either say in or or they tell you to not tonight and they point you this way and you have to walk this way to go out this queue here along the wall is the VIP guest is the guest list queue. So if you're if you've got guest list from an artist or whoever works there, you queue up here. And this is also the queue for re-entry. Because Berghain, unlike other fucking clubs in the world, like in London, piece of shit London, they London for some reason doesn't allow re-entry. Once you go into a club in London, you're basically kidnapped, right? You're basically fucking kidnapped. You're basically a hostage. Yeah, free Palestine. You're basically a fucking hostage. So in Bergheim, at least, you can go back in as much as you want. Um, but you have to, I think the re-entry price is like five euros or 10. I forgot how much it is, but it's, there's a price for it. But if you want to re-enter and you've already got a wristband, you queue up over here. And also, the thing about this is another queue. So if you come back and you're too fucked up, they won't let you in. So you have to be on your best behavior. But yeah, this brings back a lot of memories, man. A lot of fucking good memories. And usually you can hear everybody dancing already here, going crazy. It's fucking awesome. Let's read the article. How do you get into Berghain? That is a million euro question that has eluded clubbers since the venue opened its doors in 2004. Head bouncer Sven Markhard and his gang of Berlin enforcers are responsible for curating the crowd and they do so with a savage determination that leaves around half of those who try to enter out in the cold. On a chilly Saturday night, Berghain Q stretches around the industrial estate on the border of Kreuzberg and Friedrichshain for more than 800 yards as it does every weekend. We can hear bass booming from a wind and intimidated building ahead. The queue's atmosphere intensifies as you near the door. It doesn't. The queue actually quietens as you get to the door. At the end of the door, everyone's fucking drinking, sharing fucking champagne and cigarettes. As you get to the barriers, it quietens. Trust me. Anyway, it continues. Any chatter or merriment that existed further. Okay, he says it here. At the back dies out. Exactly. Any chatter or merriment that existed further back dies out. Most people lined up are wearing the Berghain uniform, which is black leather, mainly are carrying backpacks, presumably filled with food and drink to sustain themselves while they are waiting live for six hours. Full confession here. When I take a backpack to Berghain, I don't have food in there. I don't have fucking water in there. I have another outfit. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm one of those losers. If I'm in there for, a, a, you know, two, let's say like 16 hours, maybe two days, I've got another outfit in there. I have another outfit. I have wet wipes. I have some deodorant. I have a couple of moisturizers and shit. That's what I'm doing in there. I'm one of those fucking losers. I'll change my outfit after like 12 hours and put on some other thing. So I'm one of those fucking freaks. I don't have practical things. I have, you know, fashion things. 
In the surrounding area, small groups huddle to discuss the tactics while swigging Berlin uh, beers. Taxi whisk the rejected souls away to other venues or presumably home or to bed. Fortunately for me, I won't be joining the main line. I'm on the guest list. Oh, I've never been on guest list, to be fair. Um, I've never even asked for guest list, I don't think. Whenever, have I ever asked for guest list? I don't think so. Yeah, I, I don't believe in that also. I, I don't think that's cool. Um, I do know this DJ called um, F... What's his name? F-K-M... F-K... How do you say his name? Is it F... F... How do you say it? Is it F-K-M-4-A? DJ, is that his name? How do you say his name? Yeah, that is. That's his name. F-K-A M-4-A. This DJ here plays at Bergheim quite often. I really like him. Really, really cool. But he did a bit of an oopsie. Because one day, I do remember he put out a guest listing on his Instagram. Hey, I'm playing at Bergheim. If you, wanna, if you want to be on my guest list, DM me or something. And I'll choose the best people to get on there. And he promptly deleted it. Which I think the Bergheim people told him, hey, take that shit down. Because I think the Bergheim guest list, for how exclusive the club is... It's kind of a bit of a responsibility. You're kind of responsible for who you put on the guest list. If they do some madness in there, it probably looks bad on you. So you can't just be offering your guest list to strangers that you don't know because, you know, what if they go in there and do some madness? Right? I mean, it's going to look bad on you. So I'm glad he didn't, he took it down because I like him and I don't want to see him get banned or get blacklisted from playing there because he's a pretty sick DJ. But um, I don't believe in asking DJs for guest lists, by the way. Some freaks do that. Some freaks, some fucking psychos, right? We'll go to the Bergheim main site. They'll go on the fucking program. They'll see who's coming up, like who's playing. Like they'll go on May. They'll see who's coming up and, and they'll probably check, I don't know, a DJ that maybe isn't well known or somebody that they don't know. They'll click on the fucking lineup or whatever and they'll fucking DM someone and say, hey, uh, like I know you don't know me, but can you put me on your guest list? It's like, bruh, you don't know this person and you're asking them for a guest list to one of the most exclusive clubs in the world. Like, do you have any shame? Like people that just ask this type of stuff are fucking freaks. Like you, you, you need, you need to give your head a wobble. I wouldn't even ask guests. Like I find it hard asking guest lists from people that I know, like personally, actually know who would probably be happy to give it to me. I can't do that. How about somebody you don't know? Come on, bro. Makes no sense. But because it's so hard to get in, People just want to increase their chances of entry. So they're willing to put their shame, their pride to one side and just kind of say, please, like fucking Oliver Twist, can I have some more? Can I have a fucking guest list? They've got their hands out, but you shouldn't do that. I don't think so. Try your luck like everybody else. If you don't get in, it's one of the best cities in the world to, 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 to club. You can go somewhere else. It's not that deep. You know what I mean? It really isn't that deep. Also, don't wear black as a suggestion. Don't listen to everybody online. The videos that people do, don't listen. Just wear what you usually would wear on a night out. And that might actually increase your chances because you'll actually feel comfortable in what you're wearing and you won't look like you've put on a fucking techno, you know, Halloween costume with your fucking, you know, what you call it, harness and your stupid PVC. Div. People can tell you don't wear that. You've got your nails painted and you're touching your hands all the time. You look awkward. Like, don't do that. Just wear what you usually wear on a night out and most likely you might get in as opposed to putting on a stupid fucking, you know, um, outfit that you find on fucking Amazon. Anyway, continuing. Um, the, 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 so yeah, fortunately for me, I won't be joining the main line. I'm on a guest list. I make my way past the punters to join a significantly shorter queue. As I walk down the dirt path with the metal fencing either side of the cage crowd, my smugness turns into anxiety. I've warned that, that a spot on the guest list doesn't guarantee admission exactly, and even seasoned Bergheim patrons occasionally get turned away. The extent of the mystery around the door policy has even led to a creation of the BergheimTrainer.com, which allows prospective candidates to test their technique in the online simulation. Having spoken with dozens of people about how to succeed seed and receive wisdom is don't be too drunk avoid being in big groups speak german and know who is playing that night and wear black again bullshit fucking advice number one don't use this website it's fucking bullshit i've never used the website i don't give a fuck about it i'm glad i never made a video on it also it's fucking corny and lame and really dorky to be sitting there pretending oh, like fuck off dumb shit next next the don't be drunk thing is should be normal right why are you going to a club or a nightclub fucked up you should be going there to get fucked up you shouldn't be going there fucked up it makes no sense so that obviously don't do 
avoid being in big groups that also is dumb like if you have friends that you're out with what are you going to do like pretend that you're not with your friends and don't go in if you all can't go in then you don't go in like don't be like there are some people i don't know if it's just a white people thing but this idea of going out in a big group and then you let one one person gets in and the other people have to go somewhere else is fucking odd your friends if you're out with your friends you all get in if you don't all get in you all get go somewhere else no big deal the speak german thing only thing i know how to say in german is in Schuldigen. the only thing i know how to say in german is fucking in Schuldigen. And I get in all the time. So this German thing is obviously bullshit. Who's playing on the night? Of course, that's standard. Why would you go out somewhere and not know who's playing? Why would you go to a fucking nightclub and not have an idea of someone who's playing? All you have to do is go on the fucking website, go on the program, whatever day you're going, click on it, see who the list of lineup is and just copy and paste. That's all you have to do. Just do this, go like that, search on Google. Oh, look, look at the links that come up. This guy's called Ben Sims. All right, cool artists you techno da, 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 and just click on one of the links and listen through and see if you like what you hear you know event and you have a good time you skip it it's not that hard to figure out who's playing and what they're doing it really isn't that difficult to me in, a, in my fucking opinion so you have to do that and the wear black thing i say don't do this because everyone does this because everyone does this stick out a bit and wear what you usually would wear or just wear fucking bright colors and see how that goes because i wear whatever i want to wear i would wear bright colors i wear dark colors whatever i just i, I do what i want the, the last couple of times i went there I, i've worn all white jamie you know I mean? which is the opposite of wearing all black and i've gotten in pretty fine so forget all that shit continuing other suggestions include looking bored as possible having a shaved head <laughs> what the fuck they like having a shaved head being a nazi <laughs> and having a copy of mein Kampf in your back pocket all these things will increase like what anyway um other suggestions include looking bored as possible having a shaved head and never ever smiling that's also dumb i'm smiling i'm having a good time i'm talking i'm being myself in there um if you look like a tourist obviously i'm a tourist there's not many black people in fucking berlin and the black people that are in berlin don't go to fucking Bergheim or at least the ones that look like me, you know what I mean, they don't go there, if you look like you're trying too hard, it's a no, if you look like you aren't trying hard enough, it's a no, but as long as you're relaxed, it's fine, so it's not that bit, honestly, like, people just over-egg it, is it a great club, yes, does the door policy, is the door policy annoying, yes, is it almost um, discriminatory, yes, um, is it going to piss you off if you don't get in, yes, does the door policy help the atmosphere inside, of course, because they're so strict with door policy, when you do get in there, people on their, people on their best behavior to get in, when they get in, they're fucking relieved, so they fucking go crazy and have a good time, people are dancing, they cover your phone camera, so you're probably not using it as much as you would do, if you had your camera on, and just in general, phone use in there is not really a thing, you don't really see many people on their phone, it's kind of frowned upon, so the atmosphere in there is great, it's worth the wait, but it's not the end of the world. If you don't get in, there's plenty of clubs in London, in fucking Berlin, sorry, to go to. RSO is one that kind of springs to mind um, to go to and have a good time. You, you know, Oxy, um, loads of fucking clubs over there that you can have a good time at. Like, it's not the be on end or Trezor is there. Like, come on, bro. Like, all this stuff just for a nightclub. If you don't get in, go somewhere else. At the front of the queue is a metal barrier. Hopefuls are then invited in small groups to approach the gatekeepers. A group wearing jean shorts and football tops are quickly hit with bouncer signatures phrase, not tonight. Again, no problem. One guy who looks like he's part of, he's part, one one guy who looks like the part and is in his mid-twenties, his most desirable age bracket apparently is greeted with high, to which he responds to in kind and is told to leave. As the successful candidate slops away, the security mumble something among themselves, all burst out laughing. Some suspected doors off simply reject people for their own amusement. That could happen too, but it just is what it is. Like it, you could increase your chances if you don't go when it's super busy, like maybe Sunday mornings and shit. That can kind of help. Some people like going when the bouncers change their shifts. You can find that out through like you know the subreddit and um, the Berghain live, I think Instagram page. All those things can kind of help. But again, it's just luck, man. Just try luck. If you get in, you get in. If you don't, you don't. Now it's my turn. I let my German friend do the talking, and it turns out she and the man sussing us out are from the same city. We all walk through without further. Um, yeah, there's Sven. There's a main bouncer who's lovely, by the way. He's got this menacing look, and he's kind of used as the as the poster child of meanness. But he's actually one of the nicest guys that you'll meet out there in Berlin in terms of bouncers. There's some of them are that are real cunts that will actually you know make you feel like a peon. But he's actually nice. I'm not going to lie. Inside the club, my body is searched for such sharp objects. Small green circular circles are placed above 
my phone camera there are no photos in Bergheim the entry fee is 35 euros 30 pounds and I'm given a date orange wristband with a club's logo and a stencil the sheet printed on it several times I wonder where they're trying to say yeah man I remember the times where Bergheim was like 20 euros or something to get in it's really it's kind of more expensive now but it's still incredibly cheap compared to London I think fold prices are basically the same and that's one of our best clubs here. So, you know, there's some clubs in London, I think drum sheds. Drum sheds have tickets for like fifty pounds, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Drum sheds have definitely thick tickets for fifty pounds. Let's see here. Drum sheds, let's do drum sheds RA. I'm sure drum sheds have events on happening that are like fifty pounds, maybe a hundred pounds. So, you know, shitty venue and it's got these horrible tickets. So imagine going to one of the best clubs in the world and it's only thirty pounds minor. So this event on the twenty seventh of April is yeah look at that look at the fucking prices of that shit to party from 12 in the afternoon to 10 30 at night who's waking up at fucking 10 a.m to go rave go fuck yourself general admission fourth release 47.50 plus five pounds 70 booking fee that's over 50 pounds to go to one of the most soulless venues in the world in drum sheds 10 pounds of capacity and just like you know a former fucking ikea you know building that's now been turned into a club yeah no thank you continues entering the next room i met with by dozens of people stripping off it turns out the backpacks are stuffed with alternative outfits like me people of q attire bergan attire and without fail the latter means less clothing a popular choice is to wear something on your bottom half and nothing more each person th that's actually a, a good point the first time i went i think that was something i was that captivated me to be honest like seeing that amount of ripped dudes i've never I, I don't think i've ever seen that i think it probably must be normal in most gay clubs but i think in Bergheim that the 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 prevalence the amount of like buff like like when i mean buff i mean like bodybuilding buff guys just walking around topless like glistening from all the sweat is wild they're massive and they usually don't say excuse me they let their shoulders do the talking. <laughs> Each person who checks their bag and coat 250 is given a back, black necklace with a metal pendant engraved with a number hanging on it. It feels like a little cult like. By the way, it's a little. The, the cloakroom is fucking amazing. The cloakroom people that work there are fucking fantastic. They're fucking ninjas. They're fucking really good at their job. But word of warning if you ever go to Bergheim and you get given that necklace, the rope necklace with a little hang tag on it, don't put the necklace around your neck. <laughs> <laughs> I put one around my neck once and I had the worst rash ever, which makes sense because, you know, God knows what somebody's done with that fucking rope. Do you know what I mean? That's gone up someone's asshole. It's gone around someone's dick. It's gone in someone's pussy. It's gone in somebody's fucking armpit in between their fucking, you know, behind their knees. That that, that rope has been through some shit. But the one, the one time I went and I fucking put, my, you know, I put it on my neck like a necklace. And the next day, you know, my neck was looking... Like I had fucking chicken pox all over it. The bumps were fucking wild. So don't do that. Just put it in your pocket. Anyway, it continues. Inside the club consists of two parts. Panorama Bar opens first, by the way. A warm-up of Berkheim. The main event, the dark room, smoke filled, is lit with red strobes. Techno Berlin signature is blasting through one of the club's famously high-quality um, sound systems. And everyone is having a good boogie. Yeah, that's something I love about the main room. The Bergheim main room is amazing for that because it's so loud, but you can talk to your friend or you can talk to somebody without having to scream or do the club thing and kind of go close to their ear. You can actually have a conversation. You shouldn't do anywhere on a dance floor, but it's it, that, that's how finely tuned the system is. It's really loud, but it's also good enough where you can kind of hear the person next to you. So it's fucking brilliant. It's five in the morning in the blink of an eye, but things are just only getting started. Bergheim is renowned for its stamina. This weekend, the club opened on Friday night and stays open until the clock strikes 12 on Tuesday. I think this person went during a Sylvester. That might be why they paid that much price. I think this is a Sylvester person. I think so. Um, which is their special kind of like, you know, public holiday event type of thing. Um, if you don't get in, Berlin, Berlin has over 140 clubs. Happy to cater to your needs. How many clubs are there in London? How many nightclubs are in london let's see there's 140 in, in berlin officially how many are in london really that's that doesn't that's a lie there's 198 venues come on i don't know if, if i don't know if that means if that's true i don't believe that i think they are grouping together bars and stuff because i don't feel like we have 198 venues no way no fucking way we have 198 venues 
But if we do, fair enough. Let's continue. Um, if you don't get in, Berlin has 140 other venues. Um, happy to cater to your needs. That's one of the reasons why there are 12.1 million people who visit the city last year berlin's vibrant clubbing culture is one of the city's biggest draws with its highlighted when berlin techno scene gained a unesco cultural heritage status in march and a nod to its cultural contribution to the city i've only realized this in recent years that's why i stopped really comparing the cities berlin and london and stopped ranting on here about how london needs to do things differently like berlin you, we can't do that berlin's just a different place berlin's not even a set there's no other city like berlin even in fucking germany let alone the rest of Europe. So the way they do things over there, the way they fucking promote and highlight and support nightlife, it's just never going to run in the UK, ever. It won't, especially in London, it won't run. Um, we don't even have clubs that are open past 6 a.m., for goodness sake. Do you know what I mean? Most of our clubs close at 4 a.m. Most of the clubs really, in general, close at about 2. Um, huge areas of London are kind of blacklisted for having clubs like parts of Shoreditch and Dawson and Hackney have no real, you know, it's just, it's just, it's a mess. But, over there, you know, Berlin's fucking nightlife scene and Bergheim specifically has been gay, has been has become a cultural has cultural heritage status. Imagine that 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 basically means the building's protected. There's never going to be like a you know a co working space built on that ground. It's not going to get knocked knocked down and turned into fucking WeWork. Do you know what I mean that's a fucking brilliant thing? It continues. Berlin Club Commission said it is another milestone for the city's techno producers, artists, club operators, and event goers. The, la the latest announcement followed the German federal parliament's decision to make Berlin clubs culture institutes institutions sorry in 2021. They were previously considered entertainment venue thrown in with brothels and casinos but now the same legal status as museums and opera houses imagine ever if ever in the uk we could have clubs regarded on the same level as museums and like we just want clubs to be like fucking restaurants we have more restaurants in london than people that have mouths if we could have clubs be the same state as the restaurants would be onto something um these two moves that the club are entitled to tax bracket planning protection subsidies and other funding to protect it the measures have helped to protect the health of berlin's nightlife in a tough environment that is seeing late night venues close in droves in london and across europe indeed the latest data from nighttime association revealed that three thousand businesses have shut down in london berlin's nightlife doesn't appear to have suffered in the same way recognizing ports of these spaces is key it seems that's partly true some venues have closed though it's not like they're they're all, it's like all sunshine and rainbows over there there have been some venues that have closed unfortunately um due to neighbor complaints and stuff it does happen over there gentrification does affect them but just not as much as it would do in london at all because you know if, if burkhan existed in london it would have got turned into a fucking village into a something already yeah you know i mean it wouldn't have existed at all like print works even couldn't survive do you know what i mean the bergheim wouldn't survive sadly despite my best efforts i didn't have the energy to stay until bergheim section of the bergheim opened so the next day i rallied and headed back to the club by 6 p.m on sunday i'm joining the re-entry line bergheim has a policy of allowing you back in for five euros if you were previously entered at one point over the given weekend it allows party goers to rest up do their laundry feed their cats and then carry on partying exactly london could learn from that we don't have any re-entry policy. I don't think there's a single club in London that allows re-entry. I don't think so. Even the old... No, actually, I, I, I take that back. I think Hotbox does. Hotbox, big up fucking... Um, oh, why is the fucking name, name fucking escaped me? Big up Becky Strook. Big up Hotbox and Becky Strook. I think that might be the only party in London that allows re-entry. Most nights don't allow re-entry. Once you're in, you're in. You're kidnapped. You're a hostage. Um... This time, and also it, it does affect you because then you just get fucked up. You know what I mean? There's no time to rest, no time, whatever, but whatever, who knows? This time I walk through without exchanging a word. I get into Berghain at around 9 p.m. tonight and the office are more extreme. The gangs of men with shaved heads wearing bondage gear, gip masks, march towards the main part of the club. The high ceilings, the enormous scale of the club are impressive. It's hard not to feel giddy. This is a this is a wraparound still balcony that overlooks the main dance floor. From it, you can see hundreds of people dancing in trance-like state at the thumping electronic music. It's incredibly hot and busy, but there's such an excessive scene of air and your thrilled is so lively. The best place for me to people watch is the stairs leading up to Panorama Bar. 
next to where the guy that does the VJs and shit, and you just overlook the main floor of Bergheim. That's the best place for me to people watch because you see all the lights kind of like flickering and you see people like moving. It's all, it's all like stop motion. It's fucking awesome. Um, several hours later, I leave the club quite spellbound. Bergheim exceeded all my expectations. This absolutely lives up to reputation. Moving around that building while listening to that music among revelers who are all absolutely committed to night gives a place and energy and have not experienced anywhere else. Maybe the bouncers are onto something. That's the thing. That's the that's the annoying thing about Bergheim. When you get in, even after you've been rejected many times and you complain about it, you bitch about it and you write snarky tweets about it in captions and you promise yourself you're never going to go back. When you get in once, you understand why they do what they do. It's very, again, discriminatory. It's very kind of rude, right? Them not letting everybody in. But when you do get in, you understand that that care they put into who comes in, who doesn't come in, the kind of, you know, the 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 the, the ambiance around it, the attitude around it, all of that stuff, it kind of adds to the actual night because when people do get in, they're on their best behavior. And like, I've never seen any trouble in that place ever. I've never seen somebody argue. The most I've seen is people get too fucked up on like G or something. But I've never seen anybody or anything that you'd see in regular pubs, bars and fucking supermarkets, but you never see it there. The truth is that there's no secret source of making the past the bouncers. It's all a roll of the dice. Exactly. Regulars say the more you go, the more likely it is that you let in. Exactly. That's very true. If you went there every weekend, you'll be, you'll be fine. Um, or if you went there every month, you'll be fine. Or every other month, you'll be fine. Um, it just isn't that big of a deal. Um, and also, maybe it's important too. support your local scene. Go out to your local scene. Get used to that as well. Maybe that, you know, being around your local scene will give you some sort of like fragrance that you could use to go in there. You know what I mean? Because you, you, you can spot for fucking normies and people that don't belong there from a mile away anyway so maybe go to a couple sex clubs and sex parties and gay clubs in your scene in your in your city and then see how you vibe with that and then go to the big place you know what i mean don't fucking aim for the stars when you can land on the moon <laughs> or do what brenda says don't aim for the moon when you can land on the stars <laughs> anyway i think the bouncers are largely asking themselves if you look like you're meant to be there will you contribute to the right overall energy the point is give Bergen a go follow the tips enjoy the process in the worst case scenario you'll have an anecdote and if things don't go to plan you'll have the time of your life a win-win exactly go anyway it's a good city it's a cool city to hang out in if you don't mind graffiti and shit on the floor and you know homeless people chasing you down the fucking river and shit and you know loads of white people with dreads if you don't mind that it's a great city but Bergen isn't the only thing about it they've got a great food scene there great museums great parks you know great sightseeing it's a cool city in it so if you don't get in just do everything else um and obviously here's the kind of um what you call it tips the cheat seat don't be too drunk in a queue wear black or wear something very vibrant i like that vibrant speak german i don't do that it's being small groups that's dumb don't abandon your friends if you don't get in if the one doesn't get in, you should all leave. I think so. Um, know which DJs are scheduled to play. That's normal. Don't look look bored. This is stupid also. Unnecessary. Just pretentious nonsense. Shave your head. Also not doing. Don't smile. Also not doing. Don't like a tor don't look like a tourist. I am, because clearly, you know. Uh don't try too hard. I'm always trying too hard. That's my MO. I'm black. I can't afford to just go through the motions. That's not what we do. Do you know what I mean? We have to always do things ten times hard, better than people because you know we're black. Um look a bit tough. I'm not tough. I can't do that. Be in your mid-20s. I'm actually 18 and be relaxed. Cool. I'm always relaxed. So big up the writer amazing fucking article great nice to see but unfortunately for all of us irregulars who go there or for all of us fiends this will probably mean more tourists telegraph is a very big <laughs> newspaper here i'm sure it's a big newspaper everywhere um and this has been shared everywhere so don't expect you know don't be surprised if you see more people that you probably have never seen in a club or different types of people who have read this from this so you know good article but you know damn it